Welcome to this Palm Sunday version of the sermon from Norwich Alliance Church. This is Pastor Chuck Tyree. Uh, as we look into the message of Palm Sunday, a triumphant weeping king. What a contrast in, in three words. Uh, as we come to Luke uh, chapter 19 and, and look at the historic record of Jesus' ride into his city, Jerusalem, uh, the son of David, the king of kings, uh, let's pray together and ask God for insight and wisdom to apply this uh, to our own lives uh, in the 21st century. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray to you that you would help us to see Christ today. We want to uh, see your son Jesus, uh, the perfect son of God, the savior of the world. It's for that reason that Luke has recorded uh, this account of Christ's entrance into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. As we celebrate uh, this Easter season, uh, it's a season of life. And so we celebrate uh, new life, babies that are being born around us. We celebrate uh, people who've been healed, those who've had COVID and other diseases and whom we've prayed for and we've seen them wonderfully healed. And on the other hand, Father, we uh, suffer. We struggle with those we've lost during this year, funerals we couldn't attend and graduation parties that never happened and, and a many, many other things that uh, cause this season to be a, a time of a little confusion and conflict. Well, we find that in, in this Easter uh, Palm Sunday message from Luke. And we find that our Savior uh, identifies with us, whether we're celebrating uh, new life or um, grieving the loss of life. I pray that we might, with your help, the help of your Holy Spirit, see Jesus clearly today uh, in this message. Well, Palm Sunday is, is a message of uh, contrast, and confusion uh, for many people. For those who believe in Christ, that he's the savior of the world, and that he came into Jerusalem as the son of God, victorious. You know, we look at this uh, story and we echo the cries of Hosanna, praise God in the highest. We echo those who cried out, uh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we find ourselves celebrating that our Savior, our King, has come to rescue us. But for people who struggle with unbelief or just believe Jesus was a good man, uh, this story is a story that's full of tragedy. It's the story of a good man and uh, one who came uh, with good intentions and a story of injustice and suffering and death. So which is it? Well, uh, Luke's going to help us understand that and, and see Christ, the Christ that he saw uh, for, with our own eyes as we look into this. So let's take a look through Luke's eyes and find out what uh, he saw in this Palm Sunday story. Jesus is a source of great revelation and great misunderstanding. In uh, verses 38 to 40 of Luke 19, the crowd was crying at the top of their voices and laying down their, their Sunday best uh, coat in the road and, and palm branches and waving them in the air and loudly celebrating, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. And at the same time, while, while many were crying that, there were Pharisees in, in the background, in the crowd, uh, yelling to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So here's this tremendous contrast that we still hear today, uh, one that's going on in culture and society uh, all around us. Jesus is riding as the, the king of kings uh, into his city, the city of David, and he's the son of David. Now, the crowd that believed that Jesus would be a politician, a great military general, and free them from the oppression of Rome, uh, the prejudice and bigotry and hatred of, of uh, the Romans toward the Jewish people. Uh, they were celebrating because they thought Jesus had come to 
uh, set them free politically, socially, uh, to in fact give them uh, the seat of, on Caesar's throne and, and let them run the world. So their idea of salvation was like a, a modern socialist idea, like liberation theology. Uh, it, it's like all the people who think that politics are going to uh, one day save us all. If, if we just uh, get it right, we'll create some earthly utopia. They wanted freedom from Rome and they wanted prosperity. They wanted to be Americans, uh, in, in short. Well, that was wrong and it kind of ruins some of their uh, acclaim for Jesus as he's riding into his city. The words they were saying ironically are true, uh, but they had no idea what the words meant. Jesus came to be a suffering savior. He came to forgive your sins and mine and the sins of all the people who watched him ride on a, a young donkey's colt uh, into the city of Jerusalem. Jesus came to give us eternal life, spiritual life. Uh, not to make us all uh, rich and powerful. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, it says in 2 Peter, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. So Jesus came to initiate a spiritual kingdom, uh, one that lives in, in my heart and mind and my soul, uh, not a social one. Uh, many uh, people on the right and left who profess to know Christ forgot this during the last election year and, and got very angry with one another uh, about political things, forgetting uh, our kingdom, the kingdom of Christ. Our king is not a political king. He came to pay the just price for our sins and to offer himself in love to rescue us from our sin. Jesus knew what would happen during Holy Week. We sometimes forget that. Uh, he knew that when people were crying King and Messiah and glory to God, uh, that by the end of the week, uh, the doubters, uh, the naysayers, the critics would win their hearts and they would be crying crucify him uh, by uh, the following Friday. He began to teach them, Jesus in Mark chapter 8, verse 31, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Jesus told his disciples a weeks before, months before, he rode into Jerusalem that morning what would happen uh, on, the, on that day and during that week. Uh, no matter how many people refuse to believe in Jesus, he is the king. Whatever it says about Jesus uh, on the religion channel, for example, or uh, a teacher says about him at the front of a classroom or a university uh, lecture hall, uh, whatever a popular blogger or a, a media personality says, Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the only Savior of the world. Now, my goal this morning uh, for you is that you would see Jesus, the real Jesus, in Luke's eyes. God recorded this story of contrast, of light and darkness, understanding and profound misunderstanding, love and hate, faith and unbelief, so that you could clearly see the choice that everyone needs to make when they read about Palm Sunday and Jesus entering his city. Ask God, the Holy Spirit, as you listen to this message and maybe as you read uh, Luke 19, to burn through any misconceptions you may have with a, a laser light of truth and love. Jesus is saying, if you don't shout, blessed is the king, savior, messiah, about a spiritual king who's come to free you from your sins and forgive you, which you and I, we all desperately need. If we don't see that one day, the rocks and trees of New England uh, will say it for us. Let's look at uh, this next insight that Luke lets us see. Jesus is a sovereign king, a merciful savior. In verses 41 and 42, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, 
Now, this is part of the same narrative, the same uh, historic account of Jesus riding in on Palm Sunday. This is part of the same ride in verse 41. Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem as he as the city came into sight and he's riding on this young colt of a donkey and, and getting ready to enter. And he knows that there will be uh, cries of King and Messiah. Why is he crying? In verse 42, he said, if even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus is weeping for the crowds yelling Hosanna and celebrating uh, the entrance of the king. That flows against the, the tide of, of the celebration, doesn't it? Uh, Jesus gave the world every possible evidence in three and a half years before this that he is the true one savior of the world, the Messiah and God. And yet the, the Pharisees today in the 21st century scold us and, and tell us uh, like they told his Jesus on that day, tell your disciples to stop praying in public in your name. Uh, it's insensitive. Uh, tell, tell your people to stop sharing uh, their faith with other people. Uh, tell them to stop talking about you as a king and a messiah and, and the only savior of the world. Well, those modern Pharisees are just as wrong as these first century ones were. Uh, Jesus had healed leprosy, and he made paraplegics walk, and he gave sight to people who'd been blind their whole lives. Instantly, with a word, Jesus walked on water and fed thousands. Jesus said the word, and, and if he said the word, then uh, Caesar and Pilate and King Herod uh, would have all died that day, and Christ would have lived. In Matthew uh, 26, at Jesus' arrest, Jesus said this, uh, Don't you realize I could ask my Father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly? So Jesus is intentionally laying down his life for us, and he's weeping for our lack of understanding of his sacrifice. You should see a merciful king uh, in this story a weeping king, one who takes pity on our unbelief. In verses 41 to 44, I'll read more of that. As Jesus wept over it and said, even if you only you had only on this day would bring you know what would bring you peace, now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and on every side, and they will dash you on the ground you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's sovereign coming to you. Jesus is weeping for their unbelief and uh, if they would only believe in him and trust him, they would find salvation and life and joy and peace in Christ. Uh, but in, in rejecting him, in crucifying him, in thinking he's only a tragic man with a sad story. Jesus wept for their misunderstanding. Today, uh, Jesus weeps because we have the natural consequences of our unbelief. Uh, we have cities uh, whose walls are being leveled. We have uh, places of worship being torn down and, and turned into uh, uh, other things, restaurants. Uh, we have many things in our culture that devastate our children. The person who ignorantly uh, believes that God doesn't see or care uh, when we suffer and struggle uh, is not reading the story of Palm Sunday. Uh, verse 41, remember Jesus enters our city weeping. Uh, we should too, by the way. So, and there are even people who try to turn that against him. Uh, uh, some have said, oh, he was crying because he knew his mission would fail. Uh, that's not true even a little. If uh, Next uh, Sunday when we talk about the cross, uh, Jesus will victoriously cry from the cross as he gives up his life for us. It is finished. The debt is paid. So 
he predicted that people will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged. This is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, and crucified, and on the third day he will rise again. That it has always been the plan of God. How loving and how patient and how merciful Jesus is with our lack of faith. Do you picture Jesus weeping for you, uh, for your unbelieving friends? You should. Jesus is a merciful and he's a compassionate king who loves to help us, would love to deliver us and give us life. Uh, faith is our only access, though, to the joy and life and freedom from sin, slavery, uh, freedom from death that, J that Jesus came to provide. Uh, let's look to this third point. Jesus is a king who gives grace to sinners. In Hebrews chapter 2, uh, the writer explains the reason why Jesus became flesh and died on the cross. Now, he said this, For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. This was always uh, Jesus' purpose when he entered human flesh at Christmas, when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem that day. His purpose was to rescue us, to save us from our unbelief, our misconceptions about God and ourselves and the world. And Jesus is merciful and patient with unbelievers, and we should be merciful and patient uh, with unbelievers too. Rather than being proud of our faith or harsh with people, uh, we need to be humble and understand that, that we were lost too. Uh, we needed God's grace to, to see Christ for who he really is and to really trust and believe in him. People are suffering. Families are, are being torn apart. Whole subcultures are experiencing sickness and death that is preventable. And, and if they would surrender to Christ and obey him, uh, they would not be experiencing the things that they are. They're destroying their lives. You know, in Luke 6, 36, Jesus said, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Uh, we need to take the story of, of Palm Sunday, uh, a weeping Savior riding into a city, and, and look at our city, the place where we live, the, the community where you live. We need to see people uh, through the eyes of God who doesn't uh, just reject them because of their misunderstanding and unbelief and even their harshness. Understanding by the end of the week these very people he's coming to rescue uh, will take his life. In, in chapter 18, verses 31 to 33, uh, Jesus said in the previous chapter of this one to his disciples, we are going to Jerusalem. And everything that is written from the prophet, the Son of Man, will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and insult him and spit on him, and they will flog him and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. So uh, we need to take this story of, of Jesus and apply it to our own lives and our own communities in the 21st century. Uh, Jesus is sacri sacrificially loving, and we need to follow his example. Let me uh, give you just a, a few action points as you live through Holy Week and, and this year. First, self-denying love moves us, as it moves Jesus, toward people who are suffering. Uh, people will often reject us and our message, and they'll reject the, the Christ we came uh, to tell them about in love. Are you moving toward people who don't believe or disagree or are mocking you or uh, making fun of you, criticizing you, rejecting you, uh, or actively persecuting you in some way? Yes, there's a price to pay, and, and Jesus certainly paid it for you and me. And we need to pay it for our brothers and sisters, family members, uh, those who misunderstand and don't know. Uh, we need to understand, as Jesus did, uh, this second point. He knew that many people initially identify with him 
and even claim to be Christian and think they are. And they will fall away. They will reject him. Uh, uh, Monday they're yelling Hosanna and Friday they're saying crucify. You know, Jesus rode to their rescue anyway. And he died for them on the cross anyway. Understanding that people uh, who professed faith in God uh, would one day uh, be at his throne and, and say, didn't I do this in your name? And didn't I do that in your name? And, and, and Jesus weeping will say, I, I'm sorry, you never knew me. I never knew you. Uh, we need to keep loving people. We need to stay true to the gospel. Uh, it's the only hope of the world and, and our unbelieving friends. Jesus wept for their empty, hollow understanding and their weak faith. Uh, rather than condemning people or pointing to their self-inflicted wounds, we need to uh, have compassion and weep for them as well. The third point here is that Jesus actually helped them. He, on the cross, prayed for people who crucified him. Father, forgive them. You know, salvation is open to anyone who will believe, uh, even persecutors, even people who um, actively resist Christians, Christianity, Christ, and the faith. Help people in any way you can. If they're hungry, Jesus said, feed them. If they're lonely, visit them. Uh, if they're sick, pray for their healing. Uh, do whatever you can uh, to love people in Jesus' name. He fed people. He blessed them. He came and died for them, uh, knowing that most of them would not believe. You and I, we have that opportunity as well. Well, Palm Sunday is full of contrast, isn't it? Uh, Jesus is our only Savior, only King. He is the suffering Son of God. He is not a tragic figure. Uh, yes, the world was unjust to him. Yes, uh, his crucifixion is tragic, but not only for those who don't believe. For those of us who put our trust in Christ, uh, this was a day of victory. He came to Jerusalem to rescue us, to save us from our sin, to uh, welcome us into his spiritual family forever and his kingdom and eventually into his home in heaven. Rather than judging, rejecting those who judged us or judged Jesus or uh, once believed and no longer do, he cried for their suffering. And, and we should do that as well. Jesus is a merciful king. And we must see him in this Palm Sunday uh, message from uh, Luke's gospel. And then we need to actively imitate his kind of love. Uh, may God bless you to do that. Uh, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today seeking what only you can give us. Salvation in Jesus' name. Entrance not into being powerful or well all the time or uh, having it, lording it over other people, but being uh, p patient and humble servants who lay down our lives for the people we love around us, uh, like you laid down your life for us. Uh, thank you for weeping for us and, and dying on the cross anyway in spite of our misunderstanding and unbelief. I pray, Lord, that many will come to faith in you in this Easter season and live eternally, forever with you in your kingdom. And we pray this in your precious holy name. Amen. Hope to see you next week. Easter Sunday worship is at 10 a.m. God bless you. I'll either see you here or in person uh, Sunday.